In California's windswept Mojave Desert, amid decommissioned planes and nondescript hangars, commercial aviation is entering a new era. We're going to look at two ships, actually, our mothership, uh, which we call White Knight 2, Virgin Mothership Eve, and its spaceship, which is Virgin Spaceship Unity. Does it feel exciting to you still <laughs> to be it here? It's really you know, cool. We flew to space in December, and that's just the start. The, you know, the fact that we're going for a second space flight is really an embodiment that this is about regular, routine access to space. It's not a one-off space flight. Having, making something really sexy. <laughs> Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic is one of several billionaire-backed companies involved in the civilian space industry. Australian Enrico Palermo is with the spaceship company that builds and tests them. Us. Hey, this man has, oh, been, has, been, the, has been the best. And, uh, he created all this. Pretty good, it was eh? a team effort, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but thanks, Richard. Anyway. Today, workers are preparing the aircraft that's designed to take tourists to the edge of space. The big aircraft you see with the two fuselages is the mothership White Knight 2 and its mission is to carry spaceship up to about 45,000 feet. And once it's up there, uh, it releases the spaceship tube. Two, one, release, release, release. Fire, fire! Virgin Galactic first reached the definition of space more than 80 kilometres above the Earth's surface in December. Mark Forger Stuckey was the pilot on that flight testing the aircraft before he takes tourists up. Great motor burn, everybody. We're going to space, Richard. And it's just that sense of pure acceleration, that poor, pure push in the back or pushing you forward. At that time, you know, things aren't changing, and you can look outside, you realise you can see the Earth's curvature, the sky's getting a lot darker, the sky's black. And then not much after that, the motor shuts off and you... Instant weightlessness. Sounds amazing. You make it sound really appealing. I think it will be a great experience. I look forward to seeing how how they react. 264,000 feet. Welcome to space, Unity. According to Richard Branson, that moment isn't far away, and more spaceships are being built to meet demand. Check that out. We can see the Mexico. Yep. This year is the 50th year since the moon landing, so it, you know it's going to be extraordinarily exciting to see people uh, going into space. Um, I hope to, you know, to be able to go up in, in July and, 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 and I've been looking forward to it for 14 years. Um, and then you know, by the end of the year, we should be taking uh, members of the public into space. By the end of the year? Yeah. Gosh, that's soon. That's soon. <laughs> but it's, it's a long time since we started, but it's soon now. No, it's great. But the adventure won't come cheap. The initial cost will be about $250,000 per person, though that's expected to come down. At least 60, 70% of people watching this program would love to go to space. The other 30% will think we're absolutely mad to want to go into <laughs> space, but, but if we can get the price down in the years to come, which I think we can, the, the, the market is, is uh, you know, we'll, ne we'll, we'll, we'll never be able to cope with um, the demand, that, I think. And what's the rough time frame or price point that you think is realistic for that sort of actual <laughs> tourism market for spaceflight? I'm not going to give a figure because otherwise nobody will go up in the early flights. <laughs> so. Rolling to the right. As well as flying tourists to space, Virgin Galactic aims to cut the speed of long-haul flights to just a couple of hours within about a decade. Jaffe Base, million dollar view. That's the ultimate aim, is to transport people around the world at a, at a fraction of the uh, time that they currently take. Discussions are underway with the new Australian Space Agency to build a spaceport. We'd love one day to set up an operation in, in Australia um, and to work with the Australian government in making that possible. We don't need, I mean, the great thing about the way we operate is we, our, our spaceships are you know, have wings, um, they can fly, um, and you know, we could fly a mothership, we could fly a spaceship to Australia and then set, you know, set up a base in Australia and take off from there. But we do need a government to reach out to us to say that's something they'd, they, they would like. And they have not done that? Not yet, but um, yeah, we, we, if we heard from them we'd certainly respond. After 14 years of research, development and testing, the US government has given the program its blessing. 
Critics have questioned the safety of commercial space technology. Five years ago, a Virgin Galactic spaceship broke up in the air, killing its pilot. An investigation found pilot error and inadequate safety procedures were to blame. But Chief Test Pilot Mark Forgestucky has since flown many test flights for Virgin Galactic. He says the testing program will prove the safety of the ship. The test pilot's creed is, dear Lord, don't let me screw this up. There's always concerns about this. There's stuff that, hey, the motor shuts off. How well will you handle that transit? Will there be rates? Will it want to tumble on you? And it was just beautiful. It's another early morning at Mojave. And just after dawn, the call's been made to fly. And then it's time to shoot for the stars. Three, two, one, release, release, release. The spaceship reaches the edge of space for the fire, second fire. time, exceeding previously reached speed and altitude. Welcome to the club, astronauts. <laughs> Thanks, Space. I, like, right. I like this club. It's another big moment in the quest to take civilians to space. And Richard Branson and his astronauts hope it'll lead to much bigger things. It's only 500 people have been into space today. They came back and com completely changed in a really positive way. I mean, there's a wonderful book called The Overview Effect, which interviews these people and, and how they felt looking back on the Earth and what they wanted to do to improve the Earth when they came back down. And, you know, we'd like an army of people who've become astronauts to come back and fight to make this world a, a, even more magical than it is today.